Hey everyone, it's Robert Holland. In today's video, we're gonna talk about shooting for a pure white background. This is definitely a core skill of photography and it's necessary in so many different situations and there's a lot of things that can make it really tricky. So let's go over what I like to do. Now in today's video, I'm going over pure white in a studio setting, but I did already make a video about what I look for when I'm trying to get a pure white background for a headshot and I'm working on location. And you can watch that video right up here. Now in that video, I talk about my three light setup and because I'm only using three lights, I'm always pointing that third light directly at the background and that can actually have a negative impact. One, you just have to sit there and raise or lower the height because if you don't, if you don't completely obstruct the light that bounces off of the surface behind your subject, then you can start running into really low contrast images or even getting some lens flare. So when I'm in studio, I take a completely different approach for lighting that background. So here's a quick breakdown of the lighting setup that I use to achieve a pure white background for a beauty shoot. In each corner right here, we have a strobe firing directly at the wall. The wall is just a flat white. So that allows us to just toast it as opposed to putting down a plain white backdrop. And then these V flats that are on either side here, those stop or at least reduce the amount of light that can come back to the center of the setup. So by having these two lights on the outside shooting across, they're both pointed at the center of the background, but then they skip and they start going out the opposite direction. So there's a very little light that comes back towards the setup. So you don't have to worry about any contrast loss or any lens flaring or anything like that, the V-flats just give you that additional protection. And then up front here, just for the previous setup, we have 28 inch beauty dish overhead. This is kind of the ribbed beauty dish, similar to a Mola, but not exact. And you can see inside the beauty dish, we actually don't have a complete deflector plate. This is more of like a neutral density grid. It takes out some of that center hotspot without completely uh, blocking the center. And that's actually the original design for the beauty dish. A lot of people and a lot of beauty dishes these days are just deflector plates and that's all you can get. But the cheese grater is actually the original style of a beauty dish. And I personally think that the results are a little bit better. And then the only other thing that we have in this setup is this arc light or curved reflector. This is, uh, if you've ever seen a Westcott eye lighter, this is pretty much the same thing. Curved reflector, it's going to bounce any of that light that comes down here, right back up into the model, that's going to reduce the contrast in all the shadows that are caused by the beauty dish overhead. So shadow under the nose, shadow under the chin, um, and even some of the lower parts, body, arms, just gonna fill all of that up so it's not so dark. Now, one thing I wanna note here is that you don't have to do exactly what I did in that video for the front lighting, right? I was doing that for a beauty setup that's a clamshell look, it's very popular for beauty lighting, but you can apply whatever you want as key and fill lights for your subject. So if you wanna use a soft box as a key light instead of a beauty dish and you don't need that arc light reflector, you can use a V-flat for fill or another light with a soft box or no fill at all. You can take whatever creative liberties you want in the front, but the background lighting of lighting it and then blocking any bounce light, that's gonna work great no matter what you're doing. And the cool thing about it is it's highly modular depending on how much space you need to show. So you can start bringing those V-flats out if you need a wider window to shoot through, or you can bring them in if you don't need to show much space at all. Now, if you found this video and you're looking for how to shoot on pure white, there's a good chance that you're not looking for a full-on beauty setup and you're actually looking to shoot some type of very small product on a table. And if you're some type of self-starter, you sell your own product, or you're an e-commerce manager, there's just a lot of people out there in the world who are trying to shoot products on clean white for digital sales online. So in that instance, you don't need to do the whole big setup that I just had for that shoot yesterday, right? You don't have to have V flats and two background lights and that's just way overkill, especially if your product is small, there's just much better ways. Now, I really don't like shooting any type of product on paper. There's just so many problems if you're trying to light the surrounding area of a product and have it be completely pure white. You often get overexposed products or you have to do complex masking and Photoshop just to get the surrounding area of the product to be a clean white. So instead of messing with all that, what I recommend is picking up one of these product shooting tables 
And this is, I believe, the smaller one made by Flashpoint, but they come in different sizes from different brands, so you can pick something that's suitable to the products that you're trying to capture. And as you can see, I've actually got some hard lighting coming through the window, but that's not affecting any of my images, just so you know. All right, so how I have this set up here is a very simple two light process. We have one light behind the product table, and that is firing a reflector, and that is illuminating the surface of this translucent material. And that is just giving me a completely pure white surrounding the object that I'm trying to shoot without any weird shadows, because if I were lighting it from the side, then I'm gonna start creating shadows. But all the cast shadows that would be possibly created by this are just firing out into nowhere. So we're not gonna see any of them on our white surface. And then I've just got a large key light. You could modify this based on the product that you're shooting, but for something like this that isn't highly reflective, I've just got a nice big key light just to give me an even exposure on the product. And another little added bonus is that you do get a little bit of a reflection on the bottom of the product. Just looks really clean for digital sales, but it's also extremely easy to wipe out if you don't want it. All right, so if you watched my previous video of how I do it on location and you combine that with the methods used in this video, then you've got three ways that you can achieve pure white that will work better depending on what type of environment you're in. So I think that you're pretty well powered to go handle shooting pure white anywhere. All right, I hope this video was helpful. Please do me a favor and hit that like button if it was, and let me know what other type of frequent lighting situations you'd like to see me break down. Now that we're moved in the studio, I can finally put out more content for you guys. So if you wanna stay in touch with all of that, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell for notifications. Till next time, keep on shooting.